This is Radio TV Phono Nut, and here's a Lloyd's AM clock radio, probably from the late 60s, maybe 1970, 71. Uh, just a cheap Japanese-made set. The only thing American about it is the uh, Telecron clock movement. And as I'm sure most of you know, Lloyd's is, a, is or was, I don't even think they're around anymore, but they were a, they were an importer of cheap electronics, especially during the 1970s. They were actually around during the tube era. I've seen a few Lloyd's branded tube radios made in Japan, of course. Uh, this radio here is a dual speaker solid state model. I'd plug it in to see what it would do, but as you can see, someone whacked off the power plug, so we'll have to attach a, another plug here. Here's the inside, basically just a pocket transistor radio chassis uh, being powered by a step-down transformer and a little half-wave rectifier. You know, this is not one of the ones that uses a high-voltage audio output stage like so many solid-state radios from this time period are. And there are the two speakers. It looks like a couple of, uh, I don't know, three-inch speakers. Uh, it would have probably sounded better if they'd have put a single four-inch speaker or a single three-by-five-inch speaker, something like that. But even as cheap as this is, it'll probably beat some of the modern pieces of crap. All right, let's slap a plug on here, and I wouldn't be surprised if it plays. All right, I slapped an old plug on here, a plug that's way older than the radio, most likely, but it'll work. Now let's plug it in and see what happens. Is the clock running? Yes, the clock is running. Now let's see what happens when I turn the radio on. A very, very touchy volume control. The knob is very loose. Lots of squealing, like we might have an open AVC bypass capacitor. Every seven minutes a child is Well, that's good, so at least you can see an actual repair. I mean, it would be kind of boring if all we did was slap a power plug on here and the radio worked perfectly. Yeah, this volume control shaft is very loose. And I'll add that this radio is from the era when radios had pretty much became disposable items. You could buy a new one like this for under 20 bucks at pretty much any store. And it really didn't make it worth the uh, cost of repair if it was to, were to stop working and you took it to your average radio and TV repair shop. In fact, many radio and TV repair shops removed the word radio from their title and stopped taking them in because they were so cheap that they were no longer worth repairing. Kind of like TVs have gotten to be today when you can run to Walmart and buy a 30 some odd inch TV or maybe a larger TV for $129 then it's just really not worth trying to repair it when something happens to it but we like to take these old ones that are 50 years old these old cheapies and try to get them working again anyway but in an average repair shop setting of the day no uh, it wouldn't be profitable for a repair shop to waste shop time repairing one of these and because the labor he'd have to charge would be, would be more than what the set was worth and if he didn't charge much labor he'd be losing money because he'd be wasting time on this when he could be making money fixing a say a nice RCA console color TV that he could make some bucks off of so there you go 
Okay, a spring just fell out. Probably goes on the snooze button. Can explain why it doesn't seem to be working right. Alright, I've removed all the screws that I see from the chassis, and by the way, it helps to have a magnetic screwdriver when working on one of these. It's cramped, and the chassis still doesn't seem to want to come out, so I guess this is going to be one of those sets that, that leaves me guessing as to uh, what's holding it all together. So it seems this is one where the basil comes off with the uh, clock still attached, but the chassis circuit board is here. And this is one of those chassis that's a real pain in the butt to work on. You have to be real careful and not let your soldering iron slip and hit the tuning string and break it. And if you're lucky, the part that you need to replace won't be, uh, won't be situated under this uh, tuning condenser pulley here. That always seems to be my luck with these types of radios. Here's the chassis, little six transistor set. Like I said, just basically a pocket radio chassis with a half wave rectifier and filter capacitor added to it. It uses these dome transistors, the kind that Shango has so much trouble with. And if I were a betting person, I'd say one of the caps that's bad is one of these two solid plastic case jobs. They're probably both dried out. Those are notorious for drying out. But before I start jumping caps out, let's spray some cleaner in the volume control. It was staticky and go ahead and tighten down the volume control retainer nut. That's the reason it's loose and that'll be one problem we'll have out of the way. Alright, volume control is tight and static free now, but of course we still have the squealing. And of course the cap that I'm interested in would happen to be under the uh, dial scale. So let's see if I can get this scale off without disturbing the dial cord. I really don't want to restring it. And you can see the glue they used on the uh, to hold the pointer onto the string. I wouldn't be a bit surprised if it hasn't partially eaten through the dial string. It'll probably break at any time now. But yeah, this was the this was the start of your cheap throwaway radios. This is certainly not a nice quality Zenith Admiral or Motorola RCA or Philco whatever uh, clock radio from the 60s. Right a few checks. Yeah, this cap's bad. Notice whenever I remove it, it starts squealing. Let me try to carefully get that out without breaking the tuning string. And here it is, and yes, it's wide open. And it's one of those hard plastic things like you used to see in the uh, old Sanyo made Channel Master radios, and most every one of them you'll find in one of those sets is open. So, it just needs to be replaced. Well, that took care of the squealing. What's this Beach Boys I'm hearing? Probably the intro to some talk program. Let me listen and see. Could uh, WNBN have switched to an oldies format? Yeah, I was right. Some bumper music for a friggin' talk program. Okay, this is a camera that doesn't focus right. Let's try that again. Okay, that's a little better. Now this is a Marco brand 80 microfarad cap. I goofed. I thought it was a 30 at first, and I put a value that was too low in there. So even though it seemed to work, I went ahead and took it out and put the 80 back in there. Apparently this brand is still around. I know I've seen it in some 80s televisions, but this capacitor is long expired. The radio is working better, but it's still not 100%. A highly modulated 1390 still has some little bit of squealing and oscillation going on.
Well, this is impressing. There's a weak station coming in on here. Not going to go down any lower because that dial scale is getting in the way. All right, there's one more of those plastic caps. It's right under this tuning string. So I'm going to have to be very, very, very careful in removing that because I don't want to pop that string with the hot soldering iron. Okay, cap number two is a .5. We don't have that value in a low voltage variety. I've got .5s in the big humongous film caps for old radios, or, or let me expand on that, old vacuum tube radios that use high voltage circuitry. It would be kind of stupid to use one of these in a dinky little solid state radio, and it would probably be too big to fit anyway, so we just have two one microfarad electrolytics wired in series, and that gives us roughly 0.5. We have the negative terminal of one cap connected to the positive terminal of the other cap, and that gives us roughly 0.5. So let's see if we can get this in here and get it soldered back in place without breaking the dial string. Okay, I got it in there without burning the dial string into very tedious work. And let's plug it up and see if it's going to work. Or did I bugger up something? about as good as it did, and I'm just about to the point of just saying this is good enough. I mean, this is a type of radio that you're probably not going to use it every day. It's going to be more for decoration put up on a shelf than anything else, so... And it never was a hot radio to begin with. Alright, this 10 microfarad cap measured about 20 microfarad. It was in the detector circuit. In replacing that, and the volume went up, and the tonal quality got better. A thought just came to me. Any of you who grew up in the 1980s probably remember that electronic game called Operation. It was basically a human body laid out with all of the vital organs placed in strategic spots in the body. And when you reached in with the little proby thing, you had to be very careful. It was like a little alligator clip thing. You had to be very careful when reaching down in to grab the part. If you went too far to the left or right or up or down and made contact with the little conductor that was surrounding the perimeter of the tiny hole that you had to reach down through, it would sound an alarm and a red light would go off. Uh, yeah, I played that game a few times back in the day, and who would have thought that, who would have thought 30 something years ago that playing that game would uh, prepare me for working on crap like this as far as not touching the dial string with my hot soldering iron. Here's the 500 microfarad filter cap, it's way up there too. I'll go ahead and change it, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get one out of fresh new stock. I'm gonna go through my junk box and find a good 470 microfarad and, that I pulled out of an old TV chassis and stick in here. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna run the dollar amount on this radio up with my new capacitors that I recently purchased. Those will go in more worthwhile projects. And here's my used capacitor stash, and I'll look, go ahead and look for two while I'm in here, because I believe the other value is the same voltage. This is a 500 microfarad, 12 volts. We'll look for a 470 at, say, 16 or 25, something along those lines will work. Okay, there. here's two 470s. They both check with intolerance, so we'll just stick them in there. Saturday, call 601-693-0033. Alright, that's that one's changed, and on these types of radios where it's very, very easy to make a boo-boo, 
it's a very good idea to test the radio after each part is changed just to make sure that uh, the condition hasn't gotten worse. If you replace a whole bunch of parts and find out the condition has gotten worse, then you really don't know where to look. If you replace one capacitor and fire it up and it doesn't work as well as it did before you replace that capacitor, then you know which general area to, uh, to look in for the problem. Well, don't get too excited. That's just more bumper music for a talk program. Well, I think I'm about ready to put it back together. But mental disorder is not all. I don't want to stick okay. the time with psychological problems. Let's see if we can get it all back together without breaking anything. Okay, we have it all back together, and miraculously nothing broke, and there are no screws left over. This snooze button that was not functioning is because the spring had fallen off. And the reason the spring fell off is because there's a little plastic peg here that had broken off. Well, I melted some of the plastic back and hooked the spring back on there and put a little glue on there. I'm letting the glue dry, but I'm really not counting on that to hold. You know, when you get old plastic that gets brittle, it's going to break. Now, Audubon 5425 told me that over the years he's had a couple of these types of radios. One was the AM-FM version, and the other one is a version just like this that he still has, and he said on both of them, it got to the point where the alarm was intermittent. Sometimes it would engage and sometimes it wouldn't. And he said he tried cleaning and lubricating his and it was still erratic, so he just took it out of service. I don't know if the alarm works on this one or not. And I'm, we'll try it in a minute, but if it doesn't, it's just going to stay broke because I'm not tearing back into this. Like I said, this is more of a shelf queen than anything else. Or... And it's brought to you by the Honda Summer Spectacular. Or go to com slash win. An agent that continues to use Shell D Power Natural Plus Premium Jackway. No purchase necessary. Promotion ends 9119. The official rules are com slash win. Proud to enter by mail and all details. Attention military service members. If you use dual-sided combat arms earplugs during active duty between 2003 and 2015 and then suffer tinnitus, ringing in ears, hearing... The center of the country is... Uh, you know what I'm saying? So I want the best for him. And this station always has a squeal no matter what radio station it's tuned to. I think he's to. reading that wrong. Or all the, I think uh, that wrong. Let me rephrase that. No matter... What radio we're tuned into? You're reading this all wrong. The you have to have nine, ten tuned very, very sharply, or it's going to squeal. Because it's play Travis. Here is the deal, and he has a show. I want you to follow me here. It's outkick the coverage. I do think that. All right, let's set it to alarm buzzer alarm, and let's see if we can get this to work. If you don't like it, like it, like it. Well, it's engaging on this radio. Now, who knows what it'll do next time, but I'm likely not going to be using this. Here's a little something that you missed from the Ben Maller show. As long as my tube, as long as my tube GE clock radio is still functional, we'll keep using it. It's his 42nd birthday with a big piece of cake. And the cake, well, that's a contract. We learned that Brady, he said to make $15 million this year. Now for a little entertainment, here's the 10 microfarad capacitor that was measuring close to 20 on the newer capacitance meter, and that's usually an indication of high ESR. I need to get an ESR meter. I've got an old analog one here somewhere that I bought, and I didn't particularly care for it, so I hid it from myself. But I have this connected to the old school capacitance tester. I can't test it for leakage because of the uh, voltage involved here. It won't go lo down low enough for these types of capacitors, but I'm not even registering any value on the I-tube as I rotate the knob here. I'm getting absolutely 
nothing. I'm getting a very kind of a shadow of something there at the end, but I'm getting basically nothing here. Now let's get a new 10 microfarad cap and see how it tests. Here's a new 10 microfarad, 63 volt, and it reads right about at 10 microfarads. And no excessive power factor. And here it is on the new meter, 9.38, that's with intolerance. And here's the old one connected to the new meter, and now it's reading 8.4 and dropping. So that's weird. Let's just leave it hooked up a while and see and see what it drops down to. And the 2470s, just like on the new meter, are reading about double on this old one, and no excessive power factor when I rotate the power factor knob up, but definitely reads higher than it should. See, yeah, just a little entertainment there with the old capacitors. Yes, she has dreamed of this moment and just how it would be. And you come along and propose with a diamond that even she couldn't imagine. Come see us at LaBeast Jewelers and we'll help you find the diamond that's better than her dream, just like she is to you. LaBeast Jewelers, a heritage of trust since 1953. Why would I want to go to the jewelry store and spend big bucks on a diamond? I can just make my own engagement ring out of a little rubber O-ring and I can super glue a diamond tip phonograph needle to it and there you go diamond engagement ring I really wish this thing sounds pretty good for a cheapy radio with what two or three inch speakers in it but like I've said before it's just a shame that the Local AM stations are either poorly engineered and sound like crap or carry formats that I can't tolerate. Strength and honor and commitment as our men and women. That's 601. Rosenbaum at 601-693-6141 or MeyerandRosenbaum.com. Sale prices from General Steel. That's right. Start saving money every month on renting space from others. Just call 866-57-STEEL to see how General Steel... Turn the light off in the air conditioner. You can see if anything else distant comes in. Welcome to the darkness of radio tuning. Well, there's WYLS, it's about 30 or 40 miles away. So, that was pretty good. That used to be a good station, too, until the original owner died and the son took it over and turned it into an automated black gospel outfit. There's something so faint there that... Hi, this is Clayton Inman of Triumphant, and you're listening to WMER Radio 93.1 FM and 1390 AM, your hometown good news gospel radio in Meridian, Mississippi. All right, there you go. I'll wrap it up now. This should make some people happy. We replace some capacitors. <laughs>